this is Kaya Briggs for Russian East TV and it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Narendra Nayak from Federation of Indian Russian East Associations. Hello. Hello. Could you tell us um, briefly about the history of this federation? Uh, how many organizations are part of it and when it, was it uh, created? We created it around 25 years back when with uh, 13 organizations and today we have with us 20, 80 organizations from all over the country. You know, uh, India is quite a big country and we have uh, a huge population and we have a huge geographical area too. On one side we have the Himalayas and on the other side we have the Indian Ocean. So, it's a sort of continent, we call it as a subcontinent with so many languages, so many ethnic groups and uh, so much of territory. Do you have uh, organizations representing all of the Indian states or is there any state that is missing? Uh, almost all. A few of the states have three, four organizations. Some do not have. But it's on the average, I think, only two or three states are left out. That's all. The rest of them all have members. And what are the main reasons for the federations? What, what are the actions that you are undertaking? We fight for a secular, democratic setup. And we stand for a common civil code. We stand for separation of religion and politics. We fight against superstitions which exploit the people. We fight against non-science which affects a lot of people. For example, the government is now supporting things that cow dung and cow's urine mixed together can cure all diseases. The government is supporting it. And when nonsense like that is done, we have to definitely fight against it. There's a lot of intolerance. People are being killed for eating beef, for transporting cows, for eating meat and so many other things. There is discrimination based on gender, there is discrimination based on sexual preferences. All these irrational things are there because of the support of the government and the forces behind that. Um, I used to live in India for some time in the northern part, in Uttar Pradesh, and I've noticed that uh, even though people in Europe usually tend to hear about conflicts between Hindu and Muslims in India, but they don't realize that it, probably the group which is maybe most in threat are the atheists who are not recognized really as an official group. Is that correct? Yes. Atheists are not uh, recognized as an official group. They are just tagged with the religion into which they are born, unless they specifically denounce and say that they are atheists. And what happens then? Nothing happens. I am a well-declared atheist. I have said in all my court papers that I am an atheist. Nothing happens. But from the government side, isn't it that they are trying to uh, face the multiculturalism issue by supporting the idea that India is a country of various religions and they are forgetting about the non-believers? They are forgetting about the non-believers and they are trying to prop up one religion against the other and then create fights among the different communities the different castes, different groups, in order to consolidate a vote bank by which they can come to power. The present ruling party has got only 31% of the popular vote, but they are having a huge majority in the parliament. So that's the way things are. So what is the way to fight against this policy of, of the politics to actually uh, encourage religious people to, to fight against each other? Is there something you can do to stop them? Yes, we fight for the separation of the state and the religion. That's what we stand for. We say that religion must be separated from politics, the state should be separated from religion and that's the only way we can uh, stop these tendencies. And how many supporters do you have in India? I have not taken account, but uh, they say that there are around 5 million atheists in India, according to the last census. 5 million. It's not a small number. It may be a small percentage of the population, but it's not a small number. That's very reassuring. 
Um, and when it comes to promoting science, uh, what are the actual actions that you undertake? Do you publish books, articles, do you give lectures uh, or some other kind of activities? We also give demonstrations to show how non-science can cheat people. There are so-called godmen who claim to have supernatural powers and all these we show and we say that there's no need for any supernatural power. Anybody can do it. If you were to name one biggest problem that you face in India, uh, what would that be? Politics of the majority, so-called majority community. That's the biggest problem. Well, then we do hope you're going to manage to face this problem and fight this problem and finally win over it. <laughs> That's what I do hope. Thank you. Is there anything we can do to help from our side? Not much. We fight our own battles. But we may need international support when necessary. If something happens, maybe when international pressure comes, the government will uh, take more care or protect our lives. That's all we need. Well, then please just remember that our thoughts are with you and we support you all the time. Thank you very much and goodbye.